It's expensive to be poor in America because you have to have a certain amount of income to have a bank account. And if you don't, you end up having to use about 10% of your income just to use your money. That's 10% that you could be using to buy food, a car, uh, education, so you overdraw on your account for a little bit, you get a $35 fee. You don't pay that off, you get another $35 fee, right? Quickly those fees add up um, and it turns out that it becomes very expensive to have a bank account if you have too little money. So the unbanked is those who don't have a formal bank account. But there's also a sector of people who are underbanked, right? So that have a bank account but use payday lenders as their main access to financial services. They look like they're informal mom and pop shops, they've got these neon signs, it seems very much part of the community, but they're not. They're multinational, massive corporations that are highly profitable. How do they make profits? They make profits because people are poor and they need these services, and so they charge the absolute maximum allowed by law. So if you need to borrow $400 and you go to a payday lender, you end up paying something like $1,500 to $2,000 by the time you're said and done. So that is the difference between remaining a solvent, sort of uh, financially healthy individual, to being bankrupt. People that don't have bank accounts are um, people who have low income, right? So it's a lot of times people of color, the military, uh, senior citizens, students. A lot of banks over the last several decades left low-income neighborhoods. And as soon as these banks left, they created banking deserts. And this is when the payday lenders and the check cashers moved in very quickly to fill these market voids. We used to have a lot of community banks. Bankers who were part of the community, they stay in the community and grow the community. Over the last 30 years, we had small banks swallowed up by medium-sized banks, and, and they're now just mammoth-sized banks. That's why today you have five or six big banks that dominate the banking industry. Our democracy is much healthier when we all have equal access to financial services and credit. And so far we don't have that. 